you ready to kickstart your week with some dirt slinging and tire slaying action motorsports radio that packs the biggest guests? Hi, Ken Block here. Hey, my name's Jolene Van Butte. What's up, Brian Deegan? Vaughn Ginn Jr. here. They've been thrown into one show that has broken down the barriers of what a motorsports radio show should be. This is the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Racer, with support from General Tire, KMC Wheels, Dirtfish, Gibson Exhaust, and MTX Audio, with your host, who also happens to spend his weekends flying 800 horsepower trucks through the dirt, Jim Beaver. When was the last time you saw an off-road or rally driver begging to get behind the wheel of a NASCAR IndyCar? Yep, not happening, but you sure see these pavement racers begging to drive our cars. And his partner in crime every week, a self-proclaimed Canadian moto chick who was jumping triples and taking podiums before most guys even learned to ride. Amy Hood. No one knows how to say my last name. Like, is it really that hard? Amy Hood, like I'm from the hood. Don't get it twisted. Sit back, strap in, and be prepared to join us as we take you through a motorsports ride like no other. Here is the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other, Jim Beaver. She's back! Yay! That's right. Jim Beaver and Amy Hood here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. There for a while, I think uh, they thought I gave you the can, Hood. I think uh, I got a few tweets like, did, did you fire Amy? Like, where'd she go? I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, she's still a part of the show. Like, I promise. We got something big, as in B-I-G, big working. Hang tight. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, guys. I've been MIA for two weeks, and actually probably next week as well. I go back for one of my last uh, weeks of my training business, and I'll be uh, hopefully letting the cat out of the bag very soon, or in this case, I think it's like letting the elephant out of the bag, something, you know? Something <laughs> like that. Yeah, definitely. I don't know, the dinosaur so out of the bag? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm excited to be back, though. I'm stoked. We have a great lineup of guests. It's going to be a great fun time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we've got uh, my good friend Robbie Pierce, owner Impact, on the line. He just did the Mike's Peak event. Tom Parsons, he was one of your high roller winners from Monster Energy Cup. Uh, also calling in, we've got Fred Chang with the new TV show Motor Club debuting this week. And Mitchell DeYoung making his uh, reemergence in Red Bull GRC and back in the Red Bull hat. It's going to be really exciting to catch up with Mitchell. He's been off the grid for about a year and a half. All that more coming at you here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible.
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. All right. Oh, man. Dying here coming out of break. Holy crap. Man, that uh, didn't work out so well. Anyways, welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor with myself dying. Thank God, uh, Amy, you're back because uh, you may have to carry me here. I mean, geez. It's okay. I got you. Yeah, like man. Vegas. I'm like, yeah, I'm dying here. I don't know what the heck happened. Yeah, Vegas, that was uh, that was a uh, four-letter word show there. It was uh, <laughs> kind of weird having to say that. Yeah, those of you who didn't tune into the – I think the last time I had Amy on air w- with me was in uh, the Project Action podcast, which i got to give my plug. You need to go to Project yeah. Action. D- uh, subscribe, rate, review on iTunes. You can get it at Podcast One. Lots of cool stuff going on there. We've had Sarah Price, Amy, Jason Ellis, Ken Block, skateboarder Sean Malto. This week, Street Bike Tommy joins me for an hour-long interview, pulling back Ooh. the Nitro Circus veil. Uh, like seriously, we're talking origin story in Nitro Circus. Like Tommy in his younger years, he used to be like full on shenanigans, like running from cops, and like it's an mm-hmm. it's an epic interview. Like I mean, we're talking old school Nitro before Travis got famous, and uh, so uh, yeah, you guys want to go over to Pro- Project Action, subscribe to that. You can listen on my website as well as as well as uh, podcast ones and on iTunes, but. Uh, yeah, enough with uh, Project Action. I think the last time I had Amy on air was uh, was the Project Action podcast, and over there we don't have to watch our language so much. So I'm just fair warning: we need to <laughs> we got to watch it today, Hood. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> oh man! So I know uh, what have you been up to? I know you know we got some stuff we can't talk about. What can we talk about? I know you you tried something new this weekend, right? This past weekend, I did. I did my first ever hair scramble race. But it was kind of new. It was actually, they they wanted to try something out at this amazing track. It was half hair scramble, half moto. So they used, like, the full hair scramble track and threw in the motocross track. Um, It was an hour long, and it was the time of my life. Like, I totally think I'm going to quit motocross and do hair scrambling because it was so much fun. You know, like, growing up racing, I obviously have a lot and lot of different, you know, I've grown up riding every different kind of track out there, you know, sand to the hills to, you know, riding on pavement and shale. So I I have a lot of, like, I've developed a lot of good riding techniques, I think. And that just comes, again, with experience riding for years. And I kicked butt in the trails, man. I surprised myself on how good that, you know, I was able to kind of maneuver around and, you know, go up these off-cambers. You know, you go straight around a tree and straight up a hill and, and in, like, a hole, like a big rain rut. And uh, I was having so much fun. And it was it was kind of cool because me, my dad, and Brayden, we both all went down. And um, it, was, it was really cool because there's only two girls, okay? So, yes, I won the women's class. Ooh, big deal. There's only two of us. <laughs> and the other girl didn't finish. But, um so there you go. I don't claim to be the fastest woman out there alive at all. And it was kind of cool because... Um, the girl actually followed me on Instagram, and so, you know, like, I, you know, I always want to be a good role model, and ha- you always have, like, good vibes out there, so I looked at her, I was like, hey, do you want to go with the Sea Riders? Because it was just two of us, and she's like, yeah, sure. And for those who don't know, hair scrambles, you have to start straddling the front tire of your bike, and it has to be off, and you turn around, when the, when the shotgun goes, you turn around and jump on the bike and start it and go. And the girl's like, well, it might take me a little while to start my bike. I'm like, no problem. I'll wait for you. We're just racing against each other. Who cares? Like, 
I don't care. Like, I'm just here to have a good time. I'd rather us ride together and have fun than, you know, one person be gone. So um, we ended up going with the seas, and we waited until she could start her bike. And we went off, and, uh, you know, we were right in the mid-pack with the guys, racing with them. And uh, every time I'd go around, like, another lap, I'd see Brayden stalled out in the corner. And I'd just rip by him laughing, like, woohoo, keep going, laugh, you suck. <laughs> just giving him a hard time. And then... About midway, it was all about 35 minutes into the race. Um, somebody, there's a couple really gnarly off cambers that were really technical to get up. And oh my gosh, guys are lying in the bush, in the forest, whatever. And this guy slowed down right in front of me, and you know I had no nowhere to go, so I tried to pin it up the hill around a tree. Ended up back flipping my bike like in the air. Like I just let it go, kind of whiskey throttle and go towards the thing up the hill, trying to get it to go up <laughs> at least. But no, it went sideways into the forest on the side of this mountain. And um, I have no idea why, because again, like I said, every time I passed Brayden, I would yell at him and just, you know, make fun of him for being stalled out. Well, the lovely man that he is stopped, and he was winning his class, actually stopped and forfeited his win to come and rescue my butt from the side of the mountain. And like, I'm not a girly girl. I'm totally fine. Like, I would not have cared if he kept going and made fun of me, because I did to him. But I was pretty stoked that he helped me back on the trail and helped me be able to win. So it was fun. And then in, in, in the end, the last 30 minutes, we ended up riding together. We just kind of passed each other back and forth, and we actually crossed the finish line together. So super cute, super lame. I loved it. Had the time of my life. It was such a fun weekend. And I'm definitely going to do more hair scrambles. Yeah, B-Money, he's trying to get some brownie points, man. I, I dig it, B-Money. <laughs> Uh, I know. Like it was honestly though, I would still be stuck in Fordville, North Dakota right now on that side of the mountain <laughs> if it wasn't for him. Because my bike, I swear to you, Jim, I like because it was such a straight up and down hill. I figured I'm like, okay, well, if I'm gonna crash here, I want my bike to at least be on top of the hill so I can <laughs> get it off. So I just try to like, I knew I was going down, so I just try to like launch it up there, <laughs> and it ended up falling down in like in between some trees. So. I'm like straight vertical, bike facing down, trying to lift my bike over these trees. There is no way I was going to do it alone. So luckily we both went in there, threw it down the hill. Oh, my gosh. That poor race bike, I just kind of I kind of quivered a little bit and like you, shed a tear for you her. Need like a, good. You need like a thrash bike to, to do hair scrambles, when you don't, one that's not so pretty that you don't really care about beating up, right? Yeah, so much fun. Like I've seen a guy smoke a tree and like wide open. He was like third gear you don't go too fast, right? It's the third gear, hit this tree branch, flung him straight off the bike, and I thought he was dead. Like, honestly, I thought the guy was dead. And he was, I'm like, I stop him. Are you okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets on, passes me. I'm like, oh, damn it. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it was so much fun. Like, it, we it's one of those, like, motocross is very intense, and you, you're always about racing. And if you, like, fall over in the bush, like, over a log, like, you can't help but laugh because it's so much fun. Yeah, we gotta get you out to a desert race. Like, if you like hair scrambles, like you're you're like two you're you're like one step away from like coming out here and doing some desert races. I know, like next yeah. year they've got one in Nevada. It's called the the it's a UTV slash motorcycle race, but it's called the Silver State One Hundred and Fifty. So it's a whole, only one hundred and fifty miles. It's not like you're you know doing massive. You know, you can do it in like three and a half hours. But I started thinking about that. I'm like, that'd be like the perfect race to get Amy get her feet wet. And I, I guarantee you, because of where it's at, Jackie, she'll be back on her feet and i guarantee you that's one like she'll dial in and do that like it'd be fun to get you out to do do something you just need to keep a bike out here you know at our race shop or something and just that way you can bomb out here Mm -hmm. and do some races oh i know totally i mean next year is going to be crazy uh, as you know but it's going to be great because i'm going to have a lot of downtime in the summer so i hope to do a lot of different types of racing now like now that i got my feet wet and same with brayden like he loved it too. So we we're planning on just going adventuring, like jumping in the truck and driving a bunch of these hair scrambles, you know, sprint enduros, just a bunch of ton of different kind of riding because we had so much fun and like it's like that's that's the best thing. Like not lining up at a national race, but going down to some rinky dinky where everyone is like super cool and friends. Like they even waited. We were taking a long time getting ready. They're like, hey, we're ready to start when you are, and they're like waiting for us to get going. We're like, okay, sorry. Like, we just, we met such good friends, like, we invited them back to Canada, like, it's like, that's what it's about, that's what racing is about, is creating these awesome memories and friendships, and just, you know, it's, you're doing it because you love it, not to win or anything or whatever, like, it's just 
for the passion and for the fun of racing and riding a dirt bike. And oh, I love it. I'm just oh, what can I say? <laughs> it's like Christmas. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm. I know that's me. Like next year, I'm just. Uh, it's kind of what can I do that's fun? You know, I'm gonna mix in some UTVs, some trophy truck stuff, maybe a rally race, like just a mix and mash of all things motorsports. Like I just want to be all over the grid and doing a mix of everything, just having fun. Like you said, it's not necessarily lining up again, you know, at a national or the Baja 1000, you know, against a top 20 guy. Like next year, it's all about fun. Like I want to do just fun stuff, you know, just like you said. I love stuff. doing the local series races because again, like there's no pressure, but you also get to meet really cool racing cultures. Like this was, you know, only 60, about 50, 60 people came. I mean, it's still, it's fall mm-hmm. here. So the weather is not the best. And again, this was like last minute to put this together. and wanted to try something out and, like, you're meeting all these people from different areas who just, you know, they have the same desire as you. Like, they're riding because they love it. So everyone's not in competition with each other. Like, everyone's there to help out and have a good time. Everyone's chatting in the pits. And it's just such a different vibe than I get from going to race a national. And, you know, like, again, like I said, like, that's what it's all about. And it's cool when you get to actually experience all these little niche places and, and, you know, really see what the sport of motocross has to offer. And uh, there's, there's a lot out there that people don't realize. And, like, I've always thought of having a cool YouTube show or series, like, maybe later on in life, where you go around and, and like, again, you find this track was in the middle of nowhere. You would never have known that this beautiful, like, rolling hills up and down, it's like a mini Millville motocross track even existed in North Dakota. Like, I would love to have a show that kind of showed these, hidden gems of the race world you know throughout north america like it's yeah. unbelievable and hey yeah. we gotta take a break hood but uh oh. yeah we are running overtime we got robbie pierce coming up uh, after the break i'm polaris rider jim beaver i race trophy trucks professionally host a down and dirty radio show and also travel the country announcing motorsports events i've seen it all and trust me i've done most of it so when it comes time to relax on the weekend nothing is better than taking time with my family in our razor vehicles they've got the reliability i need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain if you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world look no further Further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at at Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, joined on the line by my good friend Robbie Pierce with the greatest safety company in the world, Impact Race Products. How's everything going, Robbie? Doing very well, Jimmy. How are you? Thank you for the kind words. Oh, I got lots of kind words for you, buddy. I got uh, lots of four-letter <laughs> words and a lot of words for you. You and I have. No uh... doubt. Well, I've been called worse, so that's okay. <laughs> you and I tend to have a lot of fun together, anyways. <laughs> Um, but speaking of fun, you, uh, you trumped me this past weekend, uh, Mike's peak. I got to say, you know, Robbie called me like six months ago with this idea, you know, Mike's peak and asked if I'd be down there. And I knew I had some stuff going and it was a tight window and I couldn't do it. But I said, look, Robbie, I said, if you do it again next year in 2017, I said, I I guarantee you, I will be there. But anybody that's raced in Baja or raced the Baja 500, this is like a dream. Like everybody gets to that section of road and it's like. Like, I just love it, you know, and it's like you finally put it together. You were able to go down there and race this Mike's Peak. And for those of you who don't know, it's Mike's Peak is kind of a spinoff of Pike's Peak. But basically, you're running from kind of Valley Trinidad-ish to uh, Mike's Sky Ranch. Was what, what was the total mileage? About 20 miles, Robbie? Yeah, I think it's about 17, something like that, 17, 18 miles um, and uh, up to the top. And it's, it is, it's the, you know, everybody knows who races in Baja or has been chased in Baja or... Um, been a part of a team down there. Y'all know of Mike Sky Ranch, right? And, and sooner or later, at some point in time, um, you get to go up there, and, and it's just a great place to hang out and the camaraderie and you know the stories that you tell up there. And, and the road up to it is is just a blast. It's a windy, twisty um, uh, dirt road that goes up there. And 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 as we all have, we've you know tried to uh, run up there as quick as we can. Uh, some of my chase trucks have probably gone up there a little faster than I would like them to at times. I'm sure too, but. Uh, to be able, we're always worried about the locals because the locals use that same road for yeah. the access to their homes and ranches, mm-hmm. and um, for to be able to, to run at speed without that worry and uh, to set some times with USAC there, official times, which was just a blast. Um, for a first event, Robbie did an, an exceptional job of pulling that off, um, and uh, we were just glad to be a small part of it. Yeah, and did they go beforehand? Because I've been up that road when it was, I mean, it it was like asphalt. You know, it was so nice. And then I've been up it before when there was rain ruts, and it was, I mean, it was pretty haggard, you know. I mean, what was the condition of the road? Did they prep it before the run? Yeah, I don't know if they intentionally prepped it, but it had been. We went down about a week before in my pre-runner. Um, you know, I try to get uh, every advantage that I can, even though I've been up there at speed many times in, in racing and pre-running. I, I wanted to take another look at it. I, I've you know spent the last few years up back in Indiana and haven't been to as many races as I used to. So I took the pre-runner down there, the Jimco, and, and ran up and down, and it was in really, really good shape. I wouldn't say they'd bladed it, but it was... Uh, uh, some of the areas that were rough, they they smoothed out, and and uh, so it was it was pretty fast. And in fact, I left there concerned a little bit. I, I know how fast those SST trucks are, and I thought, man, there's going to be some carnage because uh, um, a lot of the SST guys are, are pavement guys like Maddie, and hadn't really seen um, you know been on gravel roads like that. So, uh, but uh, everybody did a really good job, and and it was a great event. Yeah, and how has that been for you making the transition? I mean, you're a desert guy, and I know you've you've run short course, uh, you know, a handful of times. Like, I mean, I, I don't know total, but I know you've run at Crandon and, and places like that. But I mean, how has this transition been to Stadium Super Trucks? Because uh, these trucks, I haven't had the opportunity to to drive one. I know Robbie's invited me out, and it's just never worked out. But these things, I mean, from what I understand, they're a handful to drive. Oh, they certainly are. Um, they um, they're they're race cars. Um, you know, we I'm very familiar with our, you know, running trophy trucks for years now. And my pre-runner and the short course, I ran three full seasons in Lucas, and and, uh, and then you get in one of these, and they're, I think they're just under 3,000 pounds, 600 horsepower. Um, they feel like they're, you know, about six feet long. There's little short wheelbase <laughs> wheels, but they've got a lot of horsepower. They're very quick on the steering. 
Um, I think it's one to one, and uh, yeah, they're they're a handful, and 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 they're pretty quick. Um, they Robbie calls them more formula trucks, and they are. They're just that. So um, I'd never raced pavement until February of this year, and um, got the call from Davey Hamilton and asked me. I think I think he uh, I think he couldn't find anybody that had a passport um, other than me, <laughs> but I got the call to go down to uh, Adelaide, Australia, and race there um, for their opening. Um, opening race of the season and i'd never raced on pavement and as the joke goes i thought pavement was what you used to get to the you know, to the race course and so that was quite the learning curve so uh uh, uh jenner i was down there and he i roomed with him and he helped me a lot with uh you know some of the the tricks of, of racing uh, uh on pavement uh I said, uh, man, I got to get into those turns a little faster. He said, well, how, what, what breaking points are you using? And I said, well, what are breaking points? <laughs> he said, well, there's little marks on the pavement that tell you where to break. I said, that's like cheating. <laughs> so they don't have those in the desert. So, well, yeah, well, you know, like anything you do with Robbie, you got to get up to speed pretty quick. And so uh, by the uh, by the end of the the week, there racing in Adelaide, they, uh, at least at least was in the mid pack. So, but it was it's probably one of the uh, the funnest thing I've done in a long time was go down there and race. Uh, a road course with him. Yeah, well, I got to say, you must have not did it, done too bad because they invited you back now to a couple, a couple of different races. Exactly. <laughs> I think well, the key there is I don't tear stuff up, and and that that keeps them asking me back. But uh, Royal Purple has a great little program going. They they have the truck that they've uh, signed on for for the whole season. I'm hoping that they do it again uh, next year. Uh, they're just a great company. They've um, you know supporting uh, motorsports uh, across the board. And as, as you and I always preach, you want to support those companies that support our sport. And they put a little program together with Robbie with the Royal Purple Truck, and they've had several drivers out there um, driving the same truck. It's uh, Ari Leyendijk Jr., Paul mm-hmm. Tracy. I think P.J. Jones is down there at Go Colts right mm-hmm. now driving it. So, uh, <clears throat> so it's been a great, uh, great program. Yeah. Well, speaking of companies that support our sport, we gotta we gotta gotta ask you a few impact questions. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. how's how, yeah, how's everything going with impact, Robbie? I mean, uh, you know, obviously, I know you guys came out for the desert market. You guys have a hard shell seat out now. I've, I've been lucky enough to take delivery of two of these things, and it's just a, a beautiful work of art. I mean, I can tell you with some of the padding and things like that you've done, it's different than any hard shell seat I've ever ever seen. I mean, uh, you know, how, how is I mean, how's everything on the impact side of things? Oh, it's it's going great. It's been a tough struggle after I purchased Impact back in uh, 2010. Um, you know, getting it turned, getting the company turned around, and and I think one of the the, the most rewarding uh, aspects of that is how the off road community embraced Impact, knowing that uh, that that Mastercraft owned it and t- had taken over the reins. So uh, that always warms my heart that uh, you know that the community thought enough of us and trusted us to to take on the Impact brand and products. Um, no, it's been a great, this this year has, uh, you know, Kelly and I felt like we really turned the corner this year. It's been a great, uh, great uh, motorsport season. We were fortunate enough uh, to uh, have a driver, uh, Alexander Rossi from Andretti in our suit and winning the Indianapolis 500. Um, that was pretty exciting to be there and share that with them and jumped on a plane headed to the Baja 500 and landed in Phoenix on our way to San Diego and found out that uh, Martin Truex Jr. had won the Coca-Cola 600 and 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 so it was just one of those great days. And a week later, you know, uh, Tavo Vildosla wins the the you know the Baja 500. So it was a good week to be uh, be an impact and a Mastercraft owner. And we were pretty proud. And and it's continued. We get to work with some of the best teams, Andretti and and uh, Furniture Row, and and uh, especially in the off road side, uh, we get to work with some of the best drivers, Rob Mack and and uh, guys like that. Uh, so we're pretty proud of, of what we've accomplished and and being a part of all a small part of all their programs. Yeah. Well, I have to say I have an impact suit. Jim hooked me up uh, and Kelly, and it is so sexy. Like everybody comments on where I've gotten it done and, you know, just how nice and the embroidery it all is. And uh, it really is just, you know, a piece of art almost. But uh, I do have a question, being a female. Yes. Um, and my next career step is going to be in a fire suit. So obviously I'm taking this into consideration. But are you guys going to be coming out with, you know, a fireproof women's garment? So, I mean, the bra and the undies, because it's kind of a problem. Like, with the, the bra that we wear or sports bras, like, I haven't been able to find anything that's fire retardant out there that actually looks good, feels good, you know, has the same look of, you know, the suits. Oh, exactly. It's it's, it's a definite uh, part segment of the market that we're looking at for sure. Um, Kelly's been a big proponent of that all along. Um, she won't let me work on the research and development part of that side for some reason. No, I don't know why, but uh, no, she's actually been doing a lot of that. Um, there's uh, more and more um, female drivers. 
um, that are, are doing really well, and um, I was fortunate to uh, I'm fortunate to get to race against some of them. And so, yeah, they, there's a definitely need there, and Kelly's been working uh, with our uh, pattern designer and Jen to, to do some of those things. So we're going to be having some new products come out, um, some big announcements uh, at the PRI show. Uh, um, unfortunately, oh, wow. all those new types of things are going to keep me out of the Baja 1000 this year, but um, <laughs> look for some things at the PRI show. Don't you hate that one? Business yeah. takes... If you need a test on me, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> I sure will. I yeah. sure will. Don't you hate that one? Business takes precedent over the fun, Robbie. Exactly. My my my, my business is my work is getting in the in the way of my pretend racing career. That's for yeah, sure. That's right. We all we all work so we can pretend we're professional race car drivers, exactly. right? Well, yeah. that's what we love about this. That's what we love about this sport. Is you know where else. Uh, you know, I couldn't. I wouldn't have the opportunity to go jump in a NASCAR and race against Jimmy. But uh, and, you know, uh, for me, it's always about um, you know testing what your level against the, the best in the world. And to be able to go down to uh, Mexico and race up Mike's Peak against uh, uh, Robbie Gordon, um, probably one of the best drivers in any form of motorsports. Um, man, it's just uh, it's just uh, not immortal, that's for sure. And to be able to test your your skills against his at that level is just uh, quite the opportunity. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Robbie. Uh, you know, as always, uh, you know, we'll talk soon, but, uh, you know, congrats on uh, the finish down there at Mike's and, uh, you know, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in some more stadium super truck races. Thank you. Thanks for all you do, Jimmy. And uh, we'll be back to you soon with some, some better or bigger announcements uh, in December. Thank you very much. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Robbie. Bye-bye, guys. All right, and we're going to take a short commercial break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Tom Parsons on the line after this. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC. AC highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally.
Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, waiting on, uh, um, it looks I said, waiting on Tom Parsons. And what do you know? Here's Tom Parsons. So uh, welcome to the line, Tom. You're here with Jim Beaver, Amy Hood. How's everything going, buddy? Hey, what's up? Oh, not too much, man. Life is uh, good, but uh, not as good as yours. Uh, mm-hmm. Got to be, uh, got to be pretty pumped coming away with uh, look like a suitcase full of cash. <laughs> yeah, it was. It wasn't too bad. No. It was. Uh, yeah, I had to get one back. I was tired. Tired of Jared getting all of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, for those of you just tuning in, we got uh, Tom Parsons on the line, Jim Beaver, Amy Hood, your uh, Monster Energy Cup, uh, I guess, high roller uh, best whip winner, right? Uh, I guess, uh, that, uh, I don't know, we, we dialed in there with uh, the, I guess, the description. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's changed. Yeah. <laughs> it was the Dirt Shark biggest year. whip. Yeah. I don't it, know what it is. I think it's something best whip now because yeah, this one was a little different. It used to be Dirt Sharks like monster yeah. event only yeah. and sheer uh Feld and X games were heavily involved in it too. Yeah. This yeah. year they're heavily involved? Yeah, this year they were it was actually an X Games qualifier, so the top three guys that weren't medalists this year got mm-hmm. invites, automatic invites to X Games. Okay. The top so uh, like four, five, and six place got automatic invites. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess it, unless they were medalists, it was kind of like basically the top three guys who weren't the medalists from this year mm-hmm. got the invites. So like mm-hmm. if a medalist got second, they're are they're already invited. So it would go oh. to the next guy. Okay. So mm-hmm. as of right now, there's six invites out for uh, for X Games next year. Um, already yeah. uh, three medalists from last year, and then the top three finishers at uh, at uh, at this this round. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Um, yep. Exactly. Yeah. What's well, funny with Ooh, best? Wh- yeah. It's what's well, funny with best whip because I mean these things started. I don't know how long ago they started doing best whip contests, right? You know, and I've been watching them, watching them. Like it's to the point yeah. now where it almost scares me watching you guys yeah. do whips because it's like you guys get so far it's like are they going to be able to bring it back and it's like you guys are threading the needle man right at the last second bringing it back and it's pretty cool to see how just a simple contest like best whip has really oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean you guys have started pushing it. Yeah, it's you know it's weird. I mean, I remember watching them back in the day uh early on and then obviously I watched them a few years when I was actually trying to get into them and couldn't. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened, honestly. I, I really don't even know how it works. It, <laughs> it just evolved and evolved, and he kept having to figure out how to go bigger and more upside down. And now now we're at the point where I I want to say there's not much left, but, you, I mean, you never know. Yeah, I, I yeah, at this point, I, I don't know. I guess – Best whip, I guess you could do like a double whip, like whip it left and then right in the same jump. I don't know, like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm innovating in my head. Do you think riding in the hills and all the free riding's really helped with that? Because you, you know, you kind of jump all these off cambers and off angles, and you, you get a lot more height kind of in in the hills. If you watch a lot of videos, you can see like it's. I feel like people are kind of mastering their whips, not necessarily on a ramp, but in, you know, doing all the free riding. Yeah, you know, there's a couple people, like, I mean, I, I prefer that. I honestly barely, I don't ride ramps that much because um, I don't do a lot of freestyle freestyle. So, you got a um, ramp compound in Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, I know it's funny. I have ramps, and I just never hit them because it's just, I don't know, I, especially if I'm by myself, I just get bored. So unless I, unless I know I'm going to do a show and I have to have a couple tricks, um, mm-hmm. other than that, I'll practice right before a contest, and uh, I spend way more time more time free riding and riding motocross tracks than anything else. But there, there's a few guys like that. I would say like Barrowman, Twitch, um, guys. You know Durham is another guy. He doesn't do whip contests, but he he does good whips. You know those are all guys that probably spend more time riding the hills and stuff than they do mm-hmm. on ramps. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Did you have any? Um, motocross career or did you kind of go right into freestyle motocross and hills riding and free riding or did you kind of dabble in the moto side of things yeah i didn't even well, i i probably raced i mean i raced my whole life um you know i did the whole amateur thing in loretta's and all that stuff and i i raced supercross for probably 
I raced Supercross probably almost full time for like five years, maybe. Oh wow! And uh, it wasn't too bad. I was just kind of like a, I had a lot of injuries and just was kind of like a mid pack guy, like around twentieth or so, twenty fifth. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just did that, and then I got hurt one too many times. And I was like, man, I, I mm-hmm. wish I could want to do something that's like less painful. <laughs> yeah. So I Definitely. I don't know. It just yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. I, I just, honestly, I, I stopped racing motocross and still would do supercross part-time, and that's when I actually hit started jumping ramps because during the summer and in winter to make money, I would just start doing some shows here and there. And then uh, and then that was it. It was, it was a while. I mean, I was doing that for a while on and off, and then you know, it wasn't really until 2013 I finally got invited to a whip contest, and then that's when the ball really started rolling yeah well you know and and talking about that you not only did you did quarter pipe there too at uh it it, uh this past weekend correct uh i was i didn't get to i was supposed to but they um they didn't tell me till i was driving to the event that i was going to be in it (laughs) and uh (laughs) yeah it was just i think they were having trouble figuring out who they were inviting and who they weren't. They were waiting on a couple people like uh Renner to see if he would make it or not. And, uh, and so, yeah, there was a bunch of us that they never, that we didn't know if we were in or not. And we didn't know they were going to set up the quarter pipes at Paula for the people to practice. Uh-huh. So there was only, I'm pretty sure only Axel and uh, Jared McNeil were the only two, I think that, knew the ramps were set up and got to go practice them before the event. Everybody else just kind of winged it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because, oh yeah, because I saw your name on the entry list and then I, I kind of didn't hear any more about it. So that's why I was asking. I was wondering. But I, I don't know, just even with a quarter pipe. So I was looking at the setup they had there. And, dude, these things, I mean, those are getting gnarly. That's a gnarly. I mean, that's full-on vert ramp. I mean, you talk quarter pipe. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's going to vert. It's it's pretty insane how, how far things are getting pushed. Oh, yeah. That, that one, I, they don't know if it's going to be an X Games yet. That, so, you know, some people are pushing for it. But uh, it's, I think it's a cool event. It's, uh, I'm definitely going to do it if I got some time to practice. Um, that mm-hmm. setup there was like brand new. That was a 18, normally quarters are 12 feet. That one was 18 feet. And then, uh, you know, if you've ever seen the world record ones like Brenner's used or, uh, McNarl's used recently, you know, those ones are like 23 to 28 feet, I think. So those ones are even bigger than that, but that's like the biggest comp one they've ever used, yeah. um, at 18 feet. So. I guess that's what they're going with. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's got to be, you know, staring that thing down. You know, I, I don't know how much speed you're carrying yeah. into it. I'm assuming like 30, 35 miles an hour. I mean, that that's that takes some balls to be, you know, just, I mean, going at a vert wall on your dirt bike, knowing this thing's going to throw you up in the air, you know? Yeah, that one's, <laughs> it's, uh, that one just, you know, it's a lot of confidence, really. Just mm-hmm. knowing that if you hit it in the right spot and you go off the top, um, that you're going to actually land on the landing. It's, so it's it's more like feeling as long as you you know and you're feeling it you know where to go off because that's the thing that one you can get messed up on those real bad like if, if you try to carve off it too soon it pops you back in and you end up at the bottom of the landing and not you don't even land on the actual quarter pipe part gotcha so it can be real bad <laughs> It's kind of one of those things. Once you hit it a few times and you get a feel for it, then I'm sure it's you know it's you know it's pretty smooth. But it's just those first couple of hits trying to trying to get dialed in that sketch. Yeah, yeah. There, every, pretty much everybody who ate it first time. Uh, I mean, even Axel, uh, Chris. I mean, dude, everybody. I mean, they all hit it a little squarely the first time because it's such a new thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, where where I mean, where do you where do you see FMX heading? I mean, I you know we've seen just I mean it, it's crazy. I mean, but as far as like setups go, I mean, do you see you know there's you know do you see a mix of bringing in quarter pipes and you know wall rides? And I mean, I know like X Fighters has done a pretty solid job about bringing things in. I mean, what do you think's the future? Kind of more like almost like a skate park feel to these FMX courses and stuff. And also, because yeah. a lot of the new younger riders are getting you know the we're getting older and the new young guns are just getting younger and younger and more fearless and crazier. And I find like tricks are even getting 
you know, much gnarlier and more dangerous now. And, you know, yeah, like how do you see this evolving and, you know, what the setups of uh, X Games and the ramps and the tricks too and the evolution of the tricks? Yeah, it's, you know, it's hard to say. Like, I mean, for, Freestyle in general, like the actual FMX, it had been struggling a little bit, and uh, like here in America, you know we're we're so much so much focused on racing that mm-hmm. it's you know there's not as many kids you know starting out going right into freestyle like there is like in Australia yeah. and stuff. A lot of a lot of them are coming out of there now. Um, oh yeah, but. Yeah, with this, this added another contest for FMX. It, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, uh, you know, with X Games, it's pretty easy for them to do stuff like whip and quarter pipe and step up and stuff, which is kind of like a mix. It's sort of freestyle, but sort of not. And then, um, you know, you have FMX, which is, I know they're work, trying to figure out w- what to do. Like, I always thought, I always thought speed and style was going to maybe be the next thing because then people yeah. get the racing and the tricks. Um, but it wasn't in X Games this year, and if it's not in X Games, it's kind of that they do a couple here and there around the world. Like, but it, I mean, it's just a handful, so you don't see it much. So it's it's hard to say. I don't know. I always kind of wish they would go to almost follow the mountain bike guys and go to like the slope style courses. Oh, um, oh yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be rad. Where they, where they had to do stuff, you know, drops and wall rides that you know, just have one course laid out and they made one run through it and got scored That's instead good. of just, you know, circling around and hitting like two ramps over and over again. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's it's hard to say right now, honestly. It's at a point right now, at least for the FMX stuff, I think quarter is going to be a big hit and best whip, you know, everybody loves whips, I think. So I, I think it's going to stay. But... I think FMX is kind of at a little point now where it's maybe going to involve, you know, evolve into something else, or, or who knows? Yeah, yeah, I could, I could I see like that. I like the because it, it keeps it safer. Like, yeah. you know, every time someone goes out there and wants to, you know, think of best trick, like I just cringe when I see these guys going for best trick because, you know, it's not just about doing a backflip; it's about doing like triple backflip, handstand on your bike, flip, somersault, whatever. Like it's it's almost like I have to hold my breath to watch. And with the best whips, like you can really get the guy's creativity and you got to be a little bit different than the next guy. And I just, I, I'm a little bit more easy in watching, watching you guys do a whip compared to like a best trick where it's just Huck super gnarly, <laughs> super dangerous. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, the, the, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I, I think, you know, the thing with Best Whip and, and even like with Step Up, like fans that are, are kind of casual fans, they can see and go, hey, that guy jumped higher than the, the the guy or, hey, that whip went a little bit farther, you know, but you get into like these trick combinations and stuff of FMX, it's harder for the casual fan to understand what's going on, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is true. And I mean, it, it's, a, it's just a little different too because Moto, you know, Generally, you're 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 like a moto fan. You're not necessarily a freestyle fan, or you know, we're like a sport like skateboarding. You know, people watch like know the tr- you know they can actually pick the tricks out a lot of times. But it's because you know that's like skateboarding. It's like if you're into it, you know the tricks, you know what they look like, and it's easier to pick that stuff up. Or if you're just a moto fan, like you watch racing, you watch freestyle, whatever else, you're not really taking the time, especially if you don't do them to learn, you know, somebody doing a, I don't know, rock solid, the one-handed indie or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I would have no idea what that is. You're, you're very right on that. Like, I, I don't know any name of, you know, other than, like, the, you know, Superman, Cordova, backflip. Like, I can't get into the technicality of all these really technical tricks now. No idea. Yeah. They, they made it harder by using really difficult names, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Tom, we got to take a short commercial break, buddy, but I appreciate you taking the time to call in. Congrats on the win, and uh, I guess we'll see you at X Games, right? Uh, yeah, X Games. That'll be the next next contest anyways. Up, to, up until then, just uh, filming. Uh, Moto 8 just came out, so I'm hopefully going to be at a couple premieres for that. So everybody go check awesome. that out. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, take it easy. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. And we're going to take a short commercial break, uh, and we'll be back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. R.J. is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. for the crazy cash harvest at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. On Saturdays, swipe your club card to receive free grand prize drawing entries for the grand finale. One winner will win $25,000 on October 29th. Plus, on Saturdays, a chance to win $3,000 in cash prizes. Drawings every half hour from 2 to 6 p.m. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. And it's best, and it's back. It's Cage Range 12, live on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom, Saturday, October 22nd, with live fights starting at 7 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now with doors opening at 6 p.m. Or general admission tickets starting at just $15. Available online or at the gift shop. Cage Range 12, on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, just getting done with Tom Parsons, one of your big winners on the weekend from out there at uh, Monster Energy High Rollers at the Monster Energy Cup. And I uh, want to get to uh, some quick results. Obviously, we had um, a good friend Robbie Pierce on the line, but uh, didn't really talk much about uh, the results there at Mike's Peak. And... Uh, had a couple of races going down. Race number one, it was all Robbie Gordon. 17 minutes, 8 seconds up uh, up Mike's Peak. And uh, it's a little over uh, 60 miles an hour. Pretty uh, pretty good speed there. Uh, Sheldon Creed, the prodigy, uh, coming up uh, about 20 seconds short of Robbie Gordon. And then uh, local, Juan Carlos Lopez, uh, followed by Abdeli Lopez, uh, third and fourth. And then JT Taylor. And then my boy Robbie Pierce uh, in sixth. Uh, then going into uh, race number two uh, was Robbie Gordon again, uh, fastest up the up the road. Uh, Sheldon Creed followed by Juan Carlos Lopez, Abdeli Lopez, and then Matt Brabham uh, jumping into the fifth spot, finding uh, finding a little speed there for uh, for the second pass. So. Uh, I don't know if you're interested in this. I knew they did a live stream, but they were fighting for uh, internet service. But uh, there's some Instagram videos from helicopter footage, especially one of Robbie Gordon. You got to watch this. It's insane. Like just sending it off these mountains and just uh, it's crazy. Uh, it's like Pikes Peak on steroids. Uh, it's just, a, you know, it's like a little bit hairier, you know. So uh, I don't know. It's uh, definitely, uh, definitely worth uh, pulling up there on uh, Stadium Super Trucks. Uh, um, web page. I don't know, Hood, would you ever take a motorcycle up Pikes Peak? You've seen Pikes Peak. Obviously, you ever race a motorcycle up Pikes Peak? I know they do bikes up there. I would. I mean, I haven't, but of course I would. I would I would not not do anything. If someone offered me an opportunity to do something, I will. I, even if I suck at it and don't make it, I'll still try. Oh, totally. uh, I, I'm going to take that note and I'm going to carry it into a Whoa. segment here in a couple of minutes because, oh, dude, we we got something to talk about here. We got to take a short commercial break. But uh, on that note, I'm, I'm seriously, we're carrying that over a couple of segments. We're going to come back to this that Amy Hood will do anything. But uh, we'll be back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When R.J. Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. 
RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder RJ Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, and uh, we've got a Dirtfish Rally Report coming at you here in this uh, next quick hit segment uh, from our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web, www.dirtfish.com. And don't forget, you want 15% off a class, use that code JBDIRTFISH. That's JBDIRTFISH uh, at dirtfish.com. Give you 15% off and, uh, you know, a couple of grand in classes. That's a, quite a bit of money in your pocket at the end of the day. So don't forget to use that code JBDIRTFISH. And uh, Rally Action, Rally America wrapping up their national championship this past weekend there in uh, Michigan, northern Michigan. I did not make the trip out there, but, yes, I am still with Rally America. We just uh, – I got a lot of stuff going uh, going on with my racing career, trying to get ready for 2017. So I uh, took a step back and missed around this year, but it's all right. Don't, don't worry. But uh, Higgins and Drew ended up uh, wrapping up with uh, yet another win. Travis Pastrana and Robbie Durant uh, finishing up in second. Lachlan O'Sullivan, Scott Putnam in third overall, first in super production. Um, second in super production, it went to uh, Troy Miller. Uh, first in two-wheel drive, Ramana Lagaman. We've had him on the show in the past, as well as Natalie Richard. We've had her on the show in the past as well. Taking the win in two-wheel drive, great to see Ramana uh, back in action. He, he tends to run about one, maybe two rallies a year when he gets a chance, but he was in a 91 Porsche 911. Beautiful rally car, and uh, just barely getting the edge over uh, Cameron Steely, who ended up taking the season points championship him and Ryan Millen in a deadlock going into uh, the final round there and Steely getting the best of Millen who had a DNF um, but I know they're going to carry this battle into 2017 for sure and then our other big battle that we had going on was for that uh, was for that B-Spec championship you had Jordan Guitar and Kiana Erickson Chang both battling it out going down to the wire and uh, it looked like Jordan Guitar just edging her out to take the uh, win and the points championship. Uh, but I got to give credit to Kiana Erickson Chang. Man, that girl, uh, she definitely has a future in rally. She's very impressive. If I have one takeaway from this year, it was uh, definitely the skills that she's developed over the years. She started out kind of slow, and, and uh, man, she is on point now. And then FI World Rallycross Championship uh, in Germany. Some results there. It was Kevin Erickson with a win, Petter Solberg in second, and my boy Andreas Bakkerud in third. Kevin Hansen, Matthias Ekstrom, and Johan Christofferson. Um, uh, finishing out your final block net, making the final. Tanner Faust also racing over there. He didn't make the final, but from what I understand, Tanner will be racing some more WRX events to wrap up the season. And that was your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. And uh, we're going to take a short commercial break. We come back, I'm going to put Amy Hood in the hot seat. So uh, that coming up. Woo! I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than and Polaris in their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports. The sound of the racetrack. And the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. And uh, just like I said a few minutes ago, we're... uh, we we got something to talk about here, Hood. So okay, I have no idea what you're saying yeah, out here now. No, you said all right. I'll I'll do anything. I'll try anything. Right? Yeah, you, I could. You said you would. Race, racing related. Okay. Well, see, now you're adding into racing related. I'm like, all right. So are we talking action sports here? Like, where are we going oh, yeah, with this? Yeah, like sports related, not like eating anything because I'm very uh, eater, but. Uh... It has to do with stuff. Yeah, why, why, what? No, because I, I, it was funny because yesterday I had this conversation. It was on my private Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I've got one with an alias and I've only got like 50 friends and they're all kind of action sports and stuff like that, you know, kind of personalities. And all of us have aliases. So unless you know who it is, like you have, it's just a bunch of weird names, you know. But um, like, so no, we had this conversation. So um, I, I had said Red, Red Bull Rampage went on this past weekend. And I said, look, I said, these guys that do Red Bull Rampage, you watch these helmet cams and stuff like that, I'll try just about anything. I'm kind of with you. Like, I'll try most anything. I would never even attempt Red Bull Rampage. I know talking with Renner, even Renner's like, Dude. Oh, yeah, I totally try. Renner's like, no. These guys are going down, a, uh, going down a, a mountain. Then they're jumping like 100-foot gaps on a mountain bike over canyons. I mean, I'm like, you know, like, it's not like if you come up short, you, you, you break legs or you come up short, you die. Um, like it's, you know, and I'm looking okay, at this. Well, then maybe not. No, but I like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to die. <laughs> no, but like, I'm like, these guys are the ballsiest guys in act sports. And, and, you know, I was thinking about, I'm like, I changed that. The one guy that I think trumps these guys with a rampage is uh, the guy Felix who jumped out of outer space with a parachute. Uh, the skydiver, what was his name, Felix? Remember a couple years ago that Red Bull had that thing where he flew up to outer yeah, space in a hot yeah, air balloon? Yeah, it was like two seconds of awesomeness, and that was about it. Yeah, oh, but it still, that. it took it took <laughs> balls. I'm sorry, that took balls to jump out of outer space. Like, I, shit, I don't know. If I got up there that high and you knew the only way out was down, was I think I would have just... astronaut. Wasn't he an astronaut? Or he trained as an astronaut? Like, you got all the protective gear in the world to make it happen, and I mean... Of course, he's going to make a bunch of bazillion dollars doing it. So, of course, I would do it with astronaut gear and technology behind me. Totally. Yeah, like when he was going and he started that flat spin and, like, it was, ah, oh, he's going to black out and all that. Like, I don't know. Like, I got up there. I probably would have whisked out. I've been in that hot air balloon and, you know, 
15 miles over the surface, and I probably would have went, shit, I'm staying in this hot air balloon. They're going to have to send a spaceship up after me to get me yeah. or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. But, no, yeah. Red, Red Bull Rampage, like, I was watching it. I'll shoot you some – I'm going to send you – I'll text you like a helmet cam from one of the winning runs, and like you're gonna look at this and go, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I probably wouldn't try that. Like I, I would try most anything on a mountain bike, but that I think I draw the line there. Like rampage is just nuts. Um, okay, well send me a video because I do want to see what this looks like because I, I mean I've obviously heard of it, and I know how gnarly it is. And um, okay, maybe the one thing I won't do is like extreme downhill mountain biking unless I have some more. Training, obviously, because that stuff is gnarly. But, I mean, drop some pillows on me, some bubble wrap. Dude, I'll do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'd say there's probably, like, when you go to uh... – when you go to uh, when you go to like snowboarding, like I, I'm not a, much of a snowboarder at all, right? But I, you know, I've got no problem. I would probably go down, you know, Black Diamond or whatever. I like I would have no problem with it. But some of these guys mm-hmm. are you know, getting hellied into the top of a mountain and they're you know jumping off hundred foot cliffs on their snowboard, and you know avalanches are chasing them. Like I'd probably draw the line there. Like there's no way, there's no way I'm doing that, right? Uh, yeah, no, no avalanches. Yeah, like you see that you see those videos and the avalanche are chasing these guys down the mountain. I'm like, yeah, I think I draw the line there. Like, no, no, thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, but like you know, I don't know. I see like stuff like climbing Mount Everest. Like, I'd totally be down to do that. Like, I know you got to go through all kinds of training and stuff, and it takes years. But like, if I knew there was an end game where I could actually do it, I would start going through the training. Like, I'd love to climb Everest or something like that, you know. But some of this Absolutely. other stuff. I, I don't know. I don't know. I draw the line. Uh, Jenna Horsey, we've had her on the show before. She actually uh, wanted to see what base camp at Everest looked like, and uh, she actually went. She actually um, trained. You got to train just to go to base camp at Mount Everest, and so she actually went to base camp, one of the base camps up on the side of Everest. Like she never went to the peak, um, but she actually has been to base camp there. It'd be kind of cool to get her on to talk about that. Maybe that's a podcast thing or something. But um, like she's, uh, yeah, she's pretty legit. She's kind of an adventurer too. So. And she's Canadian. What's with you Canadian chicks and adventuring? You there? Guess not. Hood. Oh, yeah. Hi. Sorry. I muted you. It's because we live in very extreme conditions. So that's why we're super gnarly is because we have to deal with, like, you know, minus 50 degrees, negative Celsius, whatever. And, you know, we just, we're crazy. We're gnarly. We're Canadian. We're awesome. And you all come to the United States. What? And you all come to the United States. It must be too cold up there for you guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. No, hey, I wanted to ask you. So, I, I know you'd watched it a while back. I finally finally hit Netflix. There's a movie called Unchained. It's uh, like the true story or the real oh. story behind freestyle <laughs> motocross. And it like, goes back to the origins. Like, we're talking, like, before Pastrana. Like, I think Pastrana was, like, 10 in the beginning of this film. <laughs> when he was this little little jumping his little bike, grom, right? you know with all the the yeah the older guys well i was lucky enough actually last year at uh monster energy race uh monster cup blah blah i uh i got to see the premiere so they had a showing actually on vegas the night before the race a private screening like the whole first launch it was like the trial test launch of unchained so i actually got to uh go and check that out and talk to all the producers and uh, the creators and all the guys, you know, the OGs like Carrie Hart and Twitch and all them were, were in there. And it was so interesting to hear about the evolution and the claim of who did the first backflip. Um, like it was, I didn't know all the controversy there with that, with the backflip, you know, when, um, Carrie Hart apparently did it, but you know, because of, uh, he, when he landed the backflip, he actually didn't technically really land it. He landed it and split out. So there was lots of, um, you know, controversy whether he did land the first backflip. He was the first to try it. But then was it Mesker? Was it was it Mesker who actually went and did the first backflip and landed it at his house? Yeah, and Mesker was the first to have him dial. Like he was doing him, he was doing yeah. him in his sleep before guys were even, you know, getting close to landing. I'm like. I- but then, but Carrie Hart did it. Yeah. But Carrie Hart did it, but didn't technically land it. So it was really cool to hear about the controversy of them talking between, you know, who who did it and who didn't do it. And just, uh, you know, them really talking about how, you know, to get into X Games back in the day where the backflip was the plateau. Like, if you could do a backflip, oh, my God, you were super gnarly. You were definitely in. Like, that was, 
uh, you know, that was like the top trick that people didn't even think to try. They, they said the backflip was even impossible back then. And now it's like you have to be able to do a backflip just to be considered being credible and yeah. being, you know, having a place in freestyle where, you know, it was crazy to think the backflip was impossible. It's mind-blowing. Just, you know, you, that's a really, really great video. It's very interesting. And I guess, you know, just because of me being a lot younger, I – I never really grew up with freestyle, so I didn't know how it all evolved. And it's a, a really incredible video. And I didn't know how, you know, some of these, uh, you know, like Metzgers and, and the Pastranas, you know, how young he really started out and um, how how their career has actually developed. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, well, and I know, like, for me, being out here in the Southwest, like, I, I remember, like, I was so pumped to get Seth Enslow on the show, like, two years ago when I had Seth, and I need to text him and see if I can get him back on at some point because um, he's just legend status. But, like, these guys – like, I remember when the first Krusties came out. We all had dirt bikes here in the southwest and bombed through the desert and stuff like that. And that first Krusties came out, and literally there was, a, there was like five of us sitting around a friend of mine's uh, TV and, uh, in, in their VCR watching this Krusties, and my mind was blown. And uh, I remember we used to all talk about Bubba. And, like, like, I was there. Like, I was in high school when this all happened, you know, and we all had dirt bikes. And it was like my mind was blown. I'm like, are these guys seriously doing this? Like, what? Like, it was just – you know, like I, so I, I've lived that, you know, my mind being blown back then, you know, so I understand what they're talking about. And it was just, uh, I don't know, really, really cool video. So it's on Netflix. You guys uh, definitely need to check it out. Uh, I'm sure it's on iTunes, some other places by now too, but, uh, uh, Amy, I, I think guess... the best story also was just the evolution of Travis Pastrana. Like yeah. them talking about him and how Deegan. they wanted to, in... what's that? Him and Deegan, they show kind of the evolution of both. Yeah, and when they, you know, when he was a, a, a little guy who got invited to do the Krusty shows, and his dad, like, you know, let him go, and they're, you know, they didn't really know anything about Travis, just saw him, like, in his motocross gear, and went to go pick him up at the airport, and here's a 16-year-old kid with, like, his shirt tucked in, and a belt, and, you know, just with a nice hat on, like, being all very, like, clean cut, and he's like, oh my goodness, like, you know, they got to take care of this kid. And really, you know, they didn't want to expose them to any of the gnarly kind of freestyle world that there was. And it was so interesting to hear about them talk about the evolution of Pastrana. I loved it. I had no idea how cool of a dude that, like, I know how, how cool of a dude he is now, but it's just, you know, he's been the same dude since he was a little 16-year-old kid. So yeah. highly recommend checking out Unchained for yeah. sure. All right. We've got to take a, a short commercial break. We come back. Fred Chang with Motor Club. He's going to be on the line. Hey, I'm RJ Anderson, factory Polaris driver, and I drive Polaris because it's the most capable, race-ready off-road vehicle on the market. When RJ Anderson wanted to set a world record for the longest UTV jump in history, not once but twice, what company did he trust? Polaris and their championship-winning Razor XP1000. RJ is a UTV champion behind the wheel of Polaris vehicles, and he exclusively trusts the Polaris Razors to bring him race wins and championships against some of the toughest off-road racers in the world. The same Polaris Razors RJ has won championships in, set world records in, and conquered the wall of death in XP1K2 are available to you at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of world record holder R.J. Anderson and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris Razor vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. It's Cage Range 12, live on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom, Saturday, October 22nd, with live fights starting at 7 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now with doors opening at 6 p.m. Or general admission tickets starting at just $15, available online or at the gift shop. Cage Range 12, on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino, right on the water, right on the money. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey Highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. 
The 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, and I'd like to welcome our next guest to the line, Mr. Fred Chang with uh, Beyond Marketing Group, as well as uh, new TV show Motor Club, as well as Agent to the Stars, Travis Pastrana, or not Travis Pastrana, so I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, Tanner Faust and uh, Scott Speed. How's everything going, Fred? Uh, it's going good. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm booking awesome. new- yeah, I'm booking new. Uh, I'm booking new guys for you. You know, I guess I'm sure you'd have no problem taking on Travis Pastrana as uh, as an no, athlete no, of yours, no. right? I, I, I think uh, I think I'd be a lot more excited than you would be for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh man. Yeah, no. Thanks for having me on. No, pumped. It's been a long time. So uh, yeah, for those those of you who uh, just tuning in, so like anytime I have Tanner on on the show, like it goes through Fred or, you know, and, and things like that. So it's like Fred and I have known each other through GRC circles and motorsports for a while, but you've got this new show motor club dropping. And I, I saw, I saw, I think that I got a, yeah, I got it. So I got a follow from motor club months ago, I think. And uh, I looked into it. And I'm like, Oh, this is kind of cool. And then I started seeing the trailers and stuff. And I'm like, this is seriously like the television show version of this radio show like it's i mean it's i mean really? to a t it's like it's pretty amazing so kind of kind of explain how this thing got put together fred and, and what we're looking at here yeah i mean you know it's uh it was it was a concept that matt matt fife who's a director and also you know the co-creator of the show that we kind of came up with actually really over over dinner about you know putting together a show where you know we really document kind of some of you know, the life behind a lot of these guys. And it's really a, more of a sports doc, essentially, than it is more more of a reality show. But Matt comes from, you know, typical entertainment world. He's he's directed shows from House of Cards to, you know, all the way to Kardashians to Glee. So, wow. um, you know, he definitely looks at it from a different different eye, in, you know, in the way that he sees these guys. And and he has a true enthusiasm for, for racing. And, you know, I think the combination of the two and, you know, us working together and putting together this concept and, you know, really, uh, um, you know, had the ability to put it together just through the access, you know, and that's what's really key about the show is, you know, trying to get the access from these guys because essentially that's what makes the show so different from, you know, other whatever online content and whatever TV shows people really come, you know, come to the table with. So it was something that we put together, you know, a few years ago and, you know, it's taken this long really to kind of raise the funding and, you know, really get the interest of the networks. And, you know, now, you know, here we are, you know, four years later and you know, we're stoked to have the show on and uh, coming this Thursday and, and, uh, we're excited. Yeah. Well, and it, it, it covers a little bit, I mean, from, you know, from what I understand, it covers a little bit of, you know, rally, some drifting, I mean, the action, the motorsports, but I know you've got like some stuff with, uh, with Jacko, right. With, as far as two wheel stuff goes, I mean, what's, uh, what's... yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it celebrates everything that is, that has a motor really. So that's kind of where essentially where the name comes from. So it's not uh it's not specific to, you know, GRC or, you know, freestyle motocross. It really covers all genres. So we're really open to, you know, documenting the stories um, for anybody that has that kind of profession that, you know, whether it be, you know, Supercross all the way to, you know, Rally America doing stage rally events. So, and every, and everything in between, you know, so you get the guys, every, you know, guys that fly private to these races and guys that, you know, struggle to buy, you know, a tire for a race, you know. So we try to kind of show all aspects of it, but really in a sports doc 
lens. So, you know, it, if you had to put a show together or, you know, put a show next to that as a companion show or, or a competing show as a, as a comparison, you know, very similar to Hard Knocks or 30 for 30 on you know, any of the NFL films that you do, because the way that we try to document that is, you know, having the guys really just kind of be mic'd up and we're like flies on the wall. So we're just shooting them long lens and they're the ones that are really telling the story. So it's really unpolished stuff. And I think, you know, I think the people that are fans of these guys, they're going to see something that they've really never seen before. And, it's, you know, the way that they're the ones actually telling the story. So it's guys like Tanner telling Travis's story and guys like Travis telling, you know, Jacko's story, for example. Yeah, it, well, and I think it's really cool you kind of took that uh, that approach to it because it's, you know, there's a lot of things that are, you know, quote, made for TV, you know, and this really kind of, you know, you look at motorsports on TV and it's very produced and they, they tell the story they want to tell and, you know, and things like mm-hmm. that. But this is really kind of pulling back a few curtains and saying, no, th- this is kind of the way it really is, you know, and I think that's a lot of people don't get to see the personalities behind, you know, what they see, you know, out there on television. I think that's that's really kind of cool, you know, that, that you guys are, are showing that. Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of people get to kind of see a real human side to a lot of these guys. You know, they're, you know, when you see them on camera or when you see these videos of them, they're so polished on camera and, you know, they say all the right political correct things to say on TV or whatever else it is. So you kind of get this unfiltered view of, you know, who they kind of really are and, you know, really creating fans of them because they see that there is such a, you know, they're just like you and I, they're normal people, of course, you know, they, they just have a different job. So I think it's, uh, I think really at the end of the day, we, you know, we put these guys in a place where, you know, they, they become relatable people and, you know, hopefully they become, you know, bigger fans of them. So that's, and every guy, every person, every driver kind of has a different storyline, you know, guys like a guy like Scott, you know, obviously he's a big family man. So we really try to expose that side of it and, and tell that story a, a little bit better. And, you know, there's the other side of with Brian Deegan, you know, aside from the fact that he's a pro racer, he's also, you know, a guy that's really kind of grooming his kids for success with, you know, whether it be Supercross with, you know, Hayden and uh, Huxon and, or, you know, a NASCAR career with, uh, with Haley. So it's, uh, it's you know, I'd say it's, it's got everything. It's got a little bit of everything for everybody, I think. Yeah. Well, and, you know, you being, uh, you know, who you are and, and representing, you know, Scott and, and Tanner and you, you're a guy who, you know, you're really knee deep in, in action motorsports. And I know I started this show like five years ago and I really had no idea where it was going to go. And I just knew there was these motorsports <laughs> that I, that I liked and nobody was talking about them. Right. And, uh, you know, so I'm like, well, right. let's, let's talk about them, you know, well, here we are five years later and I, I was very lucky, you know, in the, in the path that I took, but you know, you represent guys like Tanner who make a living at action motorsports, you know, and how have you seen, I mean, to me, I've seen like this, this change, you know, and, it, and it's a change in generations. It's a generational shift, but I mean, you, you've got kids now who they don't care about NASCAR and IndyCar, but they really care about rallycross and formula drift and supercross and, and, you know, and off-road trucks. And I, it, it's like, we've seen this big generational shift in motorsport. And it's not to say that NASCAR and drag racing and IndyCar are going away, you know, but we have I've seen a dip in those numbers and we've seen the rise of the numbers in these other motorsports. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think, uh, I think guys like Tanner and Ken and Travis, they really kind of carved their own, you know, identity when it comes to, or change, change the way people look at sponsorships. You know, it's not about necessarily always winning that race. It's really kind of tr- trying to tie that brand with, you know, personalities that kind of, you know, work well together. And, you know, really at the end of the day, it's, it's the fans that they're trying to buy into. And I think that at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's what we're trying to do at the same time. It's, you know, motor club is always trying to create fans, a lot of these drivers and, and really build a story out, you know? So a lot of times, you know, you may not see these people because they're just not in the spotlight and, you know, they're not winning races, but there's a lot more to that than just winning races, you know? So I think that's, uh, that's something that, you know, a lot of people have to, you know, take a look at is, you know, you want somebody that whoever's racing for you. It's not always about winning races. It's about that guy that, you know, that can lose and still, you know, hang out with the fans and sign autographs and take photos and, you know, and take it with stride. And that's something that Tanner really does really well. And, you know, I think a lot of people know that about Tanner. It's, uh, you know, aside from the fact that, you know, he is a great driver, you know, he's a, he's also a fan too. So it's, you know, it's a, it's different, you know, guys like Tanner, he's a, he's, 
his life and his career has been so well documented. Um, whereas some of these other guys, you know, all of a sudden they just kind of pop up on the radar, you know, guys like Tanner, people see him struggling with sponsors and growing up and, you know, going through the ranks with drifting and, and to see where he is today, it's, you know, a lot of people kind of see that as, man, you're my idol, that kind of a thing, you know? And I think that is, uh, that's something that ultimately is different from a lot of other drivers that have, you know, gone to professional racing. They haven't been that well documented with guys like Tanner. He has been, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, give us uh, give us the details. Obviously, I think the twentieth this drops on NBC Sports. Uh, you know, w- when is episode two? How many episodes? You know, what, what's uh, w- what's the format here, Fred? Yeah. So you know, NBC has been a really great partner for us, and you know, obviously they're being the home of motorsports for them. It um, you know gives us a lot of access, but you know they've been really receptive to the show. So we have an hour slot now. Um, this Thursday at eight o'clock. Pacific, 11 Eastern, um, you know, our first show will premiere and you'll see the first and second episode kind of stack. So you'll see kind of the two shows kind of come together. Um, and they will be every Thursday for the next, uh, for the next six weeks, nice. every Thursday at eight o'clock. Yeah. Nice. Well, that definitely makes it easy for fans to tune in Thursdays at eight o'clock on NBC sports. Uh, Motor Club, and I appreciate you taking the time, Fred. I know uh, know you're awful busy, but uh, I know it's kind of silly season for you and uh, being an agent and, uh, you know, securing and locking down sponsorships and things like that for your guys. But uh, appreciate the time, buddy, and we need to do it more often. Yeah, no, I really appreciate you guys having me on. I'm uh, I'm stoked. Yeah, excited for the show and really uh, appreciate all the, you know, kind words. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Fred. Take it easy, and uh, we'll definitely talk soon. All right, thanks, guys. All right, thanks, Fred. Bye-bye. All right, that was uh, Fred Chang with uh, Beyond Marketing Group, Motor Club TV. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, Mitchell DeYoung is going to be on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Lee Valley Valley, and I choose Polaris just because they have the best quality, highest performing, most fun machines out there. Only one company has taken Levi Valley to 10 X Games medals, snowcross championships, a double backflip, and a world record long jump of 412 feet across the San Diego Harbor on New Year's Eve, and that company is Polaris. Whether it's dominating the X Games, racing a stock Polaris Razor XP1000 in the Terracross Championship, or just hitting the trail on the weekend, for over 20 years, Levi has relied on the same quality Polaris vehicles and products you can purchase at your local Polaris dealer. Take the advice of action sports legend Levi LaValle and visit Polaris on the web at Polaris.com to see the full lineup of Polaris vehicles or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. MTX Audio is the leader in sound. Whether you're looking for high-quality, all-weather motorsports audio products like sound bars, amplifiers, and speakers that will work on any UTV or motorcycle, need to dial in your car home with high-performance audio solutions, or are looking for a new portable speaker or set of headphones, MTX Audio has what you need to get your project sounding as good as it looks. MTX Audio is a family-owned American manufacturer who has been in business for over 40 years. Check out the full line of products at MTX.com. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. 
the Subaru WRX and WRX STI. It's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, and it looks like we got uh, Mitchell DeYoung just phoning in. How's everything going, Mitchell? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good, buddy. I got to tell you, it is pretty exciting to have you on the show. I'm uh, I'm pumped to finally uh, be back on air with you. Yeah, it's been a while. No, I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> hey, well, you got a fan out there. I just want to let you know that uh, Amy um, <laughs> Quintero commented on my thing and said you're a, you're a great kid. Oh. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I, it's it's funny. I you know I I, I you know I kind of teased it you know and and said hey we're gonna have you know Mitchell on air and like the feedback I got was crazy. Like I think everybody is so so dang excited for you to be back in a race car. Like it's uh, like I've never seen anything like it. Like and even talking with we just had Fred Chang who I know you know Fred with Motor Club and you know Tan, Tanner Faust agent. You know like he he and I were talking yesterday and he was so like everybody's so excited for you to be back in a GRC car. Like it's <laughs> it's crazy. Like I've never seem like uh it's like you know everybody's got mitchell DeYoung fever or something you know <laughs> no yeah it's, it's been a while it's uh it's so nice to be back in a car for sure and um no it's getting great support it's really awesome I've, I've been quite surprised as well so um but no it's been great you know it's a little bit of a break but um coming back it, it just feels awesome uh you know you know really Increases your desire to get back in it, and uh, you know it, it was there for sure. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I, you need a break to you know kind of get recharged and revamped and almost like remotivated, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, and you know, in your case, Mitchell, I mean, you like you know going back. I think the first time I ever interviewed you, you were going back. I mean, to Torque Buggy Days, maybe you took like a Torque, uh, the Torque Championship and Pro Buggy. I'm trying to think if that was the first time we interviewed you, but um, I know that kind of steamrolled into where we're at, right? So you had, I think it was, uh, you had some sponsorship there, and then I think Red Bull got involved, put you in a put you in a helmet, maybe after your Torque Championship, and then kind of steamrolled into Red Bull GRC correct in uh, the lights program uh kind of kind of take us back i mean how we're going to go back to the beginning here and kind of bring everybody to present with with mitchell de young but right you went from uh, torque pro buggy right into grc lights the next year right yeah originally when first kind of uh came into contact with red bull was back in the modified cart days okay um after that kind of got things rolling and uh they are the ones that helped me get into um right in the buggy uh, for 2012 with uh Menzies as well um and it was a really successful season um and then the opportunity came up for the lights class 2013 it was always something i i really loved doing uh really enjoy watching and stuff like that on tv um seeing it in x games and things like that and um when this opportunity came up it was kind of perfect we were able to get into it and um right away it just uh felt like home i love road racing and off-road so kind of combines the best of both worlds. I get to race against uh, all the people I look up to or have looked up to my entire life. So um, it's, it's such an awesome for sure. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, and I know, you know, you, you that one year you and uh, you know, you and, you know, I think you only won the championship. He went into supercars and then, uh, you know, and you were right behind him in the championship following year, you pretty much swept the floor with everybody <laughs> in lights cars, uh, won the championship and then uh, you kind of went off the grid last year, and then we saw you pop up. Uh, what was it at uh, the Canada RX round? And uh, you know, you came out of nowhere, and you just won. Like I, you know, I don't know how many people are out of a car for a year just show up and win. Like I mean, how was that? How did that get put together up there in Canada? Yeah, Canada was kind of a just show up and no pressure, have fun, get some seat time kind of race, and uh, you know. I'll be completely honest. I didn't really expect something like that to happen. Um, heading into it, it was like, um, you know, still kind of trying to get comfortable in the car again after taking such a long break. And uh, even though I had driven it for two seasons, it's still, um, you know, when you take that long off, it's always tough. So um, all the qualifiers went well and stuff like that. And then we had a, a stake in the semifinal when we were leading. And then it put me to the back row for the final. Um, but the final proved to be even crazier than I think any other race I've done where it 
started raining and the car was damaged and uh somehow we managed to come out on top but <laughs> I can't complain it was it was uh such an emotional uh race after kind of all the things that have happened and um to to come back and have something go that well it's it, it was truly amazing yeah well and then how you know after you know moving on from Canada that was over the summer how how did this I had heard rumors internally, like, you know, I, I hear all these rumors and get these texts and I just bite my tongue. So I kind of knew this was coming. And I think I reached out to your mom at one point, like a month and a half ago, and I never got a response. And I'm like, oh, I guess we're not supposed to talk about this yet. Cause I'd say, Hey, I want to get Mitchell on air. Right. And so I know it was one of those, like, probably one of those, like, how the hell do you know what this is going on? Right. Um, but so, I mean, take us through, okay. So Canada ended, you know, how did this deal get put it, put together for the finale there in, uh, in Los Angeles? Cause I mean, you're back. You know, I mean, you're in the Red Bull hat. You're back with, you know, a, a factory Red Bull Honda team with Olsbergs. I mean, how, how did this whole program get put together for uh, for L.A.? Yeah, it was kind of some talks throughout the season, kind of. Um, it was more of just a, a race to get seat time in the supercar, basically have my first race before we would actually make a run for the championship and things like that. So um takes a little pressure off, lets me really kind of, you know, absorb all the new stuff with um, how – competitive it is and all the new systems with the car and how fast the car is and things like that. So, um, yeah, it started quite a while ago, but we're ever really sure which one we would start in. And, um, you know, it came up in uh, L.A. was kind of the perfect opportunity and um, plenty of seat time driving there at the double header. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great, great uh, event for sure to, to make your first race and home crowd as well. So it made it really nice. So. <laughs> Yeah. How, how did it feel for you? I mean, because, you know, this has been this supercar debut for you has been building for a couple of years now. I mean, how how was it finally to get in the car and be like, all right, I'm here. I finally arrived. Right. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, the cars are so much more fun than the lights cars, I have to say. <laughs> just all the all the power is just amazing. And um, they drive quite similar, but a few techniques you have to change and break some habits to basically go really fast in it. Um, but no, it was great. I, it was a bit of a rough weekend. Um, we did have good pace. I think uh, on the final day we qualified second. Um, but, uh, in the other qualifier, I guess Q2, basically it, uh, had second gear break and then a few other issues, uh, with some contact with Ben, some wheels, and then, uh, it couldn't really make up any spots from there. So after kind of, it was really tough with that track. Um, you know, when you don't start kind of up front, it's, really hard to make up spots. Um, so, you know, it was uh, a bit of a challenge to try to get through. And I think in the final, we had a good run going. I think we were uh, going from 11th and fighting with fifth uh, with about half the race left. But uh, yeah, some contact uh, pulled the right front tire off the, off the wheel. So kind of ended our chances there, but um, you know, it was, it was a great experience. I'm, I'm really stoked about the pace um, for sure. It's a, a great learning thing. The it's it's definitely a tough class, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and, and I'm not going to put you on the spot. You know what I mean? But you know, obviously, you know, we saw you. You've got the pace now. You've made your supercar debut. I mean, uh, what are the chances in 2017 we see Mitchell DeYoung, you know, racing full time in Red Bull GRC? That'd be awesome. You know, we're working hard on it. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see where where it goes from there. But um, but yeah, uh, keeping our keeping our hopes up and. Uh, hoping to get things figured out, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. That's the goal. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, I'm not going to push you because I, I understand. I mean, we, the season just ended, and, you know, we got a lot of time before, uh, you know, the kickoff to GRC 2017. But I, I got to ask you because you took this, you know, this year off, right? And you and I, I've seen some of the setups that, that you and your dad have put together as far as, uh, you know, this online racing series, right? And it's – I mean, the, these setups are, are crazy, these simulators, right? I mean – you know, how, how, you know, tell me about, because what is it, iRacing you're doing, right? I mean, tell me about this, because this stuff is, like, almost as close to driving real race cars as you can get. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, yeah, I do all my training on iRacing usually. Um, it's it's basically, how I have always looked at it is, um, you know, something like Rallycross is so hard to get practice in, really, because the cars are either not around or there's no real tracks to actually practice on. Um, so for me, the alternative was, you know, something like either karting or, um, simulator stuff. And, um, for what it was for me, um, 
fortunately, like my dad and I could put together some some uh, setups and uh, go and have some fun on the simulator. It, it makes training fun, absolutely, and uh, it's it's great. I, I look at kind of back in 2013 to 2014 off season. Um, from there, I didn't really have any um, testing or anything like that before kind of X Games or rather uh, Lidden Hill for the first race that I did in 2014. Um, so I did about six months of driving on my simulator only, and um, it, it the improvement was pretty significant, I think, um, going from the two years. Uh, so I attribute it all to sim racing and how much it's helped me. Of course, you don't get the same kind of seat of the pants feel, but if you can really figure out how to immerse yourself uh, visually with what's going on and use the sound and the forces of the wheel, um, you can apply all the same techniques, and it's it's such a helpful tool. Yeah, well, in, in talking about that, I mean, the simulator you, you got, it's not like somebody's going and buying a steering wheel at Walmart for their computer, you know, for 50 bucks. Like, I mean, I, I've seen the setups that, that you're driving on. I mean, how close is it, you know, like you said, I mean, you know, the, there's things that, you know, being a simulator can't do. But, I mean, as far as, like, the feedback and things like that, I mean, is it pretty darn close to, to driving a, a real race car? It's incredible. You know, the, the wheel I have can simulate the forces of, like, an F1 car, um, depending if I drive that car or not, or if I drive another car, I can simulate the forces of that. The pedals are just as stiff, just as hard to push and things like that. Um, seats, same. um, you know, it's, it's such a, it's, it's really easy to get immersed for me, actually. Um, you have all these awesome tools that it, it really feels like the real thing. Um, it's, you get all the same feedback from like bumps in the track and things like that. So, um, wow. it's, it is really easy to apply it to the real car, which makes it super helpful for me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. Uh, man, I see they need like moto simulators, right? Hood, maybe you get into video yeah, games. Well, for my, my next sport, as you know, again, like, I don't know how I'm going to train for that. Like, it's a really cool thing. I get, is there, is it able to adapt to different uh, types of motorsports too? Like, can you, um, set it up anywhere for like, you know, uh, off-road or Baja or anything else like that? Or is it? strictly kind of set up for what you do uh it depends on the simulator uh, you're running on um for i racing they do mostly oval and road racing but they do have dirt coming soon i think they're going to be adding a rally cross car and some uh dirt late models and stuff like that so um as far as other ones uh it all kind of depends on other games and stuff that you could find and um should all adapt pretty well so yep yeah. Well, I can tell you, Hood, if you're interested, the Youngs can set you up with an awesome, uh, awesome setup. I've seen. I know your dad was trying to get me to get me to get one at one point. I just couldn't pull the trigger on the on the cost yet. But I like I've seriously since we talked like two years ago. I've been I've been watching your social media and seeing the stuff, and I'm like, man, I really ought to invest in this because I think it's an investment. It's what it is. You know, it's not it's not like a toy. It literally is an investment into your racing career. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's. It, it absolutely is like what you're saying. And, uh, you know, the, for me, it's when you go and train for four hours a day on that, it's, it, it makes training fun. So <laughs> I uh, can't complain. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Mitchell, man. It, it's been great to catch up. Like I'm so pumped to see you in a, in a GRC supercar. Uh, you know, it, it's been a long time coming and I was just amped. I mean, it, to me, it didn't matter what you did in the race. It was just, you know, seeing you there in the flesh on television in a supercar. I'm like, all right, Mitchell finally made it like, you know, mission accomplished. So, you know, congrats to you, buddy. And, uh, you know, good luck in 2017. I'm sure, uh, sure. We'll catch up this off season at some point when you got some news to bring to the table. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's been great. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks a lot, Mitchell. Yeah. Thank you. All right. That was uh, Mitchell DeYoung, GRC supercar driver. I've been waiting a long time to say that. Uh, on the line, he's we're going to take – He's a interviewer. He What's speaks really well. He's really interesting. Yeah, he's, uh, he's awesome, man. Young kid who's been brought up right by his parents, uh, Vince and Shelly. Like, seriously, he's a uh, class act. Uh, the whole family is. Uh, but we're going to take a short break. Amy and I will be here to wrap things up here in uh, just a couple of minutes on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, wrapping things up, and uh, yet another show in the bag hood. And uh, good to have you back today. I guess. <laughs> uh, Good to be back. I don't know. My phone keeps sort of cutting in and out here. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was an awesome show. I, I love that we had a little bit of everybody on from all different types of backgrounds and, you know, and, and racing industries. I, I always like that. I like when we kind of mix things up and we got we got to shift gears, you know, every person we talk to. Yeah, we were totally all over the grid today, which is uh, definitely mm-hmm. – Definitely, definitely fun when you can do that. But uh, uh, man, we couldn't do this without uh, amazing uh, group of sponsors: Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Casey Highlights, Gibson, Dirtfish, MTX, Impact, Terracross, Blue Dart Resort, and Casino. Got to thank uh, Fred Chang, Mitchell DeYoung. Uh, Got to thank uh, Robbie Pierce and Tom Parsons. Uh, don't forget to use those coupon codes JBDirtfish at Dirtfish.com or MTX. Just use uh, my last name, Beaver, B-E-A-V-E-R, for 10% off at MTX.com. And uh, you can always follow me at JimBeaver15 on Instagram and Twitter. It's at AmyHood71. Both of us have Facebooks, Amy Hood, Jim Beaver. Just search them and uh, downanddirtyshow.com. And uh, don't forget uh, iTunes, Project Action, uh, rate, review, subscribe, or go to Podcast One and uh, catch that uh, new show of mine. Uh, Amy's going to kind of freelance and bounce around in there here and there when she gets a chance. But uh, it's all uh, there at Podcast One. Street Bike Tommy, my guest this week. And I don't know, you got anything to leave us with, Hood? 
No, I'm just excited to actually uh, listen to that Street Bike Tommy interview. He's always crazy and a great interviewer, and I'm pretty excited to hear about the origin of Nitro Circus. So you better believe I'll be tuning in. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Like I don't know, it was a it was a Tommy. Like we've had him on air before and things like that, but it was like it was pretty cool. Like it was a it was a humble Tommy, but talking about him, like he threw himself under the bus when he was younger like he's just like i was you know like i was he's like i was loose like and not good loose he's like i was just he's like i was bad news you know so it's kind of cool to to you know to have tommy you know kind of kind of talking about things like that so uh definitely definitely good stuff but uh i don't know thanks to all of you for tuning in and uh you know amy uh you know i guess uh, i don't know if we'll see you next week or not but uh you know as always you know you're welcome so uh <laughs> i'll try i'll try i'll be traveling but uh I believe I'll try my hardest. If I have a little bit of time off, I'll make an appearance. But we're pretty solid all day. We train and test. So. All righty. Well, we will see you guys next week. As always, game Bye. on.